Hey, you're watching Rapid MMA, and these are my main card picks for UFC 202. We'll start from the bottom and work our way up. Please be sure to check out my in-depth breakdown for the main and co-main event. The links are available in the description. I didn't know much about Homasi, so after doing a little research and trying to find common ground between him and any of Tim Means' past opponents, I noticed a few similarities between Homasi and Jorge Masvidal. Come to find they both train out at ATT. Interestingly enough, Jorge Masvidal fought Tim Means at lightweight and defeated him via decision. I thought that was interesting and could possibly be a huge benefit for Hamasi assuming Masvidal was able to provide any insight. Hamasi is very powerful, doesn't overextend himself often, good takedown defense and seems well rounded. There's no question this is a big step up in competition for him though, plus it's on short notice. I don't think there's much Hamasi can do except for find a home for his powerful right hand or one of his punches. If he stays sound defensively and doesn't fight at Tim's range, he could possibly put Tim away early. Hamasi really seems to pack a punch just watching his past fights. His opponents really react to his shots. Tim Means looks really good at welterweight. His striking has improved and he's a tall guy who stands southpaw. I think there's a clear skill differential between Tim and Hamasi. I'm not sure if Hamasi has had experience against many southpaws. Anything can change with one punch if he can find a home for the right hand like Masvidal did. Interesting thing to note is that Tim Means has been off for a year, whereas Hamasi just fought on August 5th. Means popped for PEDs, so who knows what it'll look like upon his return. I'm thinking of picking Hamasi here, although Tim Means is likely the safer pick, since I don't really have much interest in this fight in the first place. I'm going to say Hamasi comes in, dropping bombs, and takes Means out in the first round. First round knockout for Sabah Masi. I apologize if I said his name wrong. Hyung Yu Lim versus Mike Perry. This will be a fun fight, I think. Mike Perry is very strong. He's very powerful, which has helped him gather a record of 7-0. UFC.com says he has an amateur record of 8-3, a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, and he says his favorite grappling technique is a high crotch slam. Despite being put in bad positions on the ground, matched up with more technically sound fighters, or basically being KO'd against David Mundell, Perry has found a way to win. That could be the same thing here too. Even though Lim is fucking enormous, has experience against top opponents in the UFC, and I think is more technically sound, he gets hit and he sometimes gets a little wild and overextends. Either way, watching Mike Perry's fight against David Mundell showed Perry getting dropped by punches before being saved by the bell. He came back to win the second round though, but that doesn't give me a lot of confidence to pick him, so I'll have to pick Lim by first round knockout. The size, short notice, and inexperience is all against Mike Perry but he certainly has a puncher's chance. Rick Story vs Donald Cerrone I think Story poses some very interesting problems for Cowboy. Rick is a fast starter, relentless, great combinations where he'll mix it up with body shots, heavy leg kicks, and a decent gas tank especially for his style. That being said, a lot of his fights, they go to decision whether he wins or he loses. I also find that he's often open to the head kick, and since he's southpaw, there's a threat of the open stance that could be beneficial, but it could also pose some interesting problems for someone like Cerrone who has awesome kicks. Cerrone is much taller, so Story will be punching up. I anticipate Story to work in a lot of body shots since he has some of the best in MMA. Cerrone has great kicks, his BJJ is deadly, and his knees are going to be a big factor against the shorter Rick Story. Cerrone uses the step and knees beautifully. I think Cowboy will have a tough round one since Story knows he's a slow starter. He'll look to take full advantage of that. I could see Story winning this fight by decision if he keeps a high pace, otherwise it's a body shot that could really hurt Cowboy. However, I think Story leans on his wrestling quite often, and I'm not sure if he'll be able to hang with Cowboy there. I think Cowboy has a better overall grappling game. If Cowboy finds himself in trouble or simply wants to take this down, I think he can do it. Also, I still have questions regarding Story since he hasn't been too active lately where Cerrone has. I was really close to pulling the trigger on Rick Story to win by decision, but with this being a second fight in 2016, while the others took place in 2014, plus the I believe he had surgery on his back, I can't bank on inactivity. I'm picking Cowboy, he's more active, looks good at welterweight, and has the extra weight in his punches. I also think he's simply more healthy at welterweight. I'm banking on Cerrone to pick up another finish here. Story has shown susceptibility in certain grappling areas, but also to head kicks. I think Cerrone finds a way to finish in the second round. So my pick is going to be Donald Cerrone to win by second round submission. Really great fight. Looking forward to it. I think both guys are great picks if you're thinking about picking Story. Anthony Johnson vs Glover Teixeira. Check the description for my in-depth breakdown of this fight. Like I stated previously, I think Glover's best chance to win is by submission or grinding his way to a decision victory. I know Glover has tight boxing, is going to look for openings on Johnson, but I'm not convinced he can knock him out or outbox Johnson, especially early. 
Maybe if Johnson gasses out, Glover will be able to pick him apart in the latter half of round two and round three. Or maybe if Glover just simply has the better footwork and movement, he can keep Johnson out of range and land his shots and avoid Johnson's big shots. In my opinion, this is all dependent upon whether Glover can survive the assault and power of Rumble. My guesstimation is I don't think he can. Rumble is powerful and owns the same arsenal of attacks we've seen Glover struggle with throughout his career. Luckily for Glover, not only his technique, but his chin and heart have gotten him this far. I'm picking Anthony Rumble Johnson to win this fight, and I'm thinking first round knockout or TKO. Conor McGregor vs Nate Diaz 2 It's been fun to watch people filter through my in-depth breakdown of this fight. So many more McGregor haters that claim to be Diaz fans and a lot of passionate prickly fans on both ends. In the beginning of that video I gave my opinion on how I felt Conor can win, but some people never got past that part to see that I've picked Nate Diaz to win. But that's besides the point, this channel isn't about fandom. I think Conor still gives Nate a fun fight on the feet with good exchanges between the two. I still think Conor can TKO Nate as well. I'm not the only one who feels that way. They both had opponent specific training, a training camp, and more time to adjust to welterweight. However, as I made note of in Holly Holm vs Valentina Shevchenko, when it's Southpaw vs Southpaw, I personally tend to favor the fighter with the more dynamic lead hand. Nate has that, and he has different combinations to work with. Good rhythm, and I think the better fundamental footwork. There's the strength differential that seemed to be present in the clinch, and of course, Nate has a jujitsu to put constant submission threats on Connor. I doubt Connor plays a counter striking game or attacks the lead leg enough to really do damage. He'll stomp it like he did in the first fight, I think, and he'll pressure like he did in the first fight, I think. I just think he'll be more prepared for the counters, choose his attacks more wisely, and probably throw more in combinations rather than one huge shot. I'm thinking of making one minor change to this pick, and that's the round. Like I stated in my first video, I really don't like picking 4th or 5th round finishes for that matter, and I don't know if this fight can make it that far. It could, but I'm not sure it's likely, so I may switch that to the 3rd round, but still, my pick is going to be Nate Diaz to win by Knockout or TKO. That does it for my main card picks, please be sure to subscribe to Rapid MMA for more UFC 202 content.